Well, Bitcoin has stabilized at almost exactly $14 a coin. I'm tired of waiting for a jump. So I'm taking the loss and getting my cash back. I wish I had kept my 1,700 Bitcoin at 6 cents instead of selling them at 30 cents. They are at $8. guys it's k-dub here with another episode of crypto zombie so today is saturday hope you're having an awesome day thank you to everybody that came out to the midnight tna special no i'm talking about technical analysis with crown crypto that was very fun so having a look at what's going on today we are seeing some mild red now the thing i want to point out is that a lot of this is driven by bitcoin losing 2.19 percent so if you do change this to the bitcoin comparative you'll actually notice that it's looking a lot brighter for some of these altcoins. So actually today, the altcoins are outpacing Bitcoin. So we're going to talk about this. We're going to get into it. Obviously, Bitcoin has had a little bit of a slump recently. We are currently in this triangle formation, which we've been looking at. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the key levels. And if we were to fall lower, well, then we do need to obviously change our discussion a bit. But I want to talk about Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin, who basically came out and said that the U.S. could run out of cash by September? Yeah, that actually happened, guys. We're going to talk about that. I didn't even know that could happen, right? Well, we're going to talk about that. Also talk about Bitcoin, short-term, long-term perspective. Also, why we are still on track for a $20,000 to $40,000 Bitcoin, maybe by the end of this year. But let's Let's get the week over. Let's talk about what's happening. And if that sounds good to you, well, you guys know what to do. Also, if you haven't gotten subscribed to the Crypto Zombie channel, what are you waiting for? We do this every single day and we also give away the Ledger Nano S every single Monday. All you gotta do is drop a comment on literally any video throughout the course of the week. Now, let me give this a quick refresh live and have a look at the fact that the Bitcoin dominance is pulling back. We were about 65.5% and now we're down to 65% according to Coin Market Cap, which like I said, is showing that we are seeing some of that flow and trickle down into the altcoin. So as you can see where it's mostly mostly red across the board, if you do switch it to Bitcoin, well, you're seeing a lot more green. In fact, looking at some of the big gainers today, we have Electronium up 22%, Ravencoin 22, Bitcoin, Agricia still pumping, Komodo, V-Systems, Digibyte, Metaverse, ETP, and Theta. So we are seeing some altcoins doing well today, even though Bitcoin is kind of in a little bit of a 2% slump, right? Now, we didn't have a massive crash after you know Trump came out and made that tweet. We actually pumped a little bit, but it looks like we sort of pulled back basically to where we were. In fact, if I actually just look at what we're uh, doing over the course of the week, you'll notice that over the course of the past seven, seven days, Bitcoin is actually the only coin in the top 20 that's up and it's up 0.17%. So basically this was just a really big not so good week for the altcoins and a lackluster week for Bitcoin. So overall, not really a very, not really a great week. But if you were holding altcoins, well, you definitely got hit a lot harder in the USD and Bitcoin comparative. Okay. So that is something to note. But one altcoin that's doing quite well today is STP Network. Now we spoke about them. We had Mike Chen on the channel. And, you know, I told you guys, um, you know, I was looking into this. So maybe you guys scoop some up. It's up 50% today, so, you know, congratulations to anybody that got their hands on that. Having a look, though, there's the interesting thing over at Coin Farm. You're noticing that right now, even though we are seeing Bitcoin in, in, in a little bit of a slump, we are seeing buys across the board. We have Binance, Bitfinex, Bitthumb, and Bitflyer all flashing buys across. And if we actually scroll down to the longs and the shorts, we still do have shorts at 51.39%. So the shorts are betting against Bitcoin, but people are buying on the spot market. Seems like we're having a bit of a confusing weekend. So let's dive in. Let's have a look. So is anything out of the ordinary here? Well, not really, guys. I mean, we came down to this ascending broadening wedge. We have been pretty much forming since back here. Like I said, I'm not counting this crazy run up over here because this was the part that really didn't make sense, right? So currently we are being supported by that trend line. So that is exactly what we were looking at. This nothing is out of the ordinary right now. The one thing I do want to point out though, is we did fall out of this uh, triangle within the triangle that we were speaking about. So I'm actually going to get rid of that because 
we don't need to look at it anymore. I'm going to keep this dotted trend here because we did finally make three points of contact. So even though we're below it, if we do get back into this area, then I would consider it to still be important. But most likely, we're probably going to end up hanging out in this giant triangle with this blue box zone, hopefully looking at around 10,600 and basically 10,620 bucks as the danger zone, okay? If we go lower than that, then we're then we may end up putting in a lower low, but currently we've still put in a higher low. As you can see, we had this low here back around July 1st, and we've had this higher here, July 11th and 12th, and the most recent one, which was today. So as long as we can keep putting in higher highs, this does show that the trend is still going up and would probably say that when we do have this breakout, we are going to break out to the upside. Of course, we do have a few days. Uh, we have until actually, if you want to go all the way to the end of this, about August 1st, but we know it's probably going to end up breaking out much sooner than that. Now, the other good thing I want to talk about on the daily looking at BLX, we are above all of the major moving averages, the 50, the 100, the 200, and the 14, uh, excuse me, the uh, 200 weekly, right? So that is a good thing as well. And the one other thing that we were talking about actually last night on the video with Crown was this just trend line that's been dating back all the way since way, way, way back here to 2011, even though it's difficult to sort of, you know, really gauge the markets back then because it was mostly just miners mining Bitcoin. We didn't really have a lot of the people trading on exchanges, but you could see that this trend has pretty much provided support. And whenever we tend to dip below it for just a little bit, we tend to get pulled right back up. And then that is exactly why when we fell below it right here, which was around, you know, that that horrible week in November, we were really scared. We were worried that, you know, we had broken this trend and that we were never going to get it back of it, but uh, back above it, excuse me. But as soon as we did, you could see that it's provided ridiculous support ever since, especially here on the weekly. Look, once we got above it, when we came down here uh, on the week of May 13th, yes, we wicked below it, but the actual bottom of the candle was was stomped out exactly. And then over here, we didn't have the candles, but we had the wicks on the week of June 3rd and the week of June 10th supporting the trend. So if you do think that we need to come back down here and sort of retest this, obviously we're not going to fall directly down. But if we were to do something you know, maybe have a little bit of a pattern. This is if you do think we're going to go lower, you know, odds are we'll probably be supported somewhere by this trend line. So, you know, like we said, $9,000, I was even actually talking about an $8,000 level yesterday. So that was the situation moving forward. But guys, the one thing that you really have to look at that you cannot deny, and we brought this up again last night, was the Super Guppy. Now, I know a lot of people laugh. I think it's because of the name Super Guppy. It's a silly name, but you could see that looking at the weekly over here on Bitstamp, which has a very, very long history uh, that we can look at on Bitcoin, as soon as this guy turns green, so it turned green on the 10th of December, roughly in 2012, and it stayed green until September uh, 8th of 2014. So you could tell that when this thing flips, it flips. You can see right here, we went into our neutral and our bearish zone before again turning back January 11th, where we stayed green all the way until uh, basically June uh, 18th of 2018. We went into the bear, we flipped red, and currently you could see right here on June 3rd on the weekly, we have turned back green again. And you could see once we go green, we genuinely stay there for a long time. Now, having a, a look at what we were talking about, if you guys didn't have an opportunity to check out the talk I had with Crown, it was a pleasure to have him back on the channel. It's been quite some time. In fact, the first time we had Crown on the channel, we were worried about going down to a $1,800 Bitcoin. I mean, it was like the trenches of the markets, and now we're finally seeing some positive growth. So definitely check this out if you guys haven't. I'm going to give it a like because I like Crown. Uh, that was a good video. Check it out. I will drop the link below and above. You guys know the drill. But, you know, looking at this Wall Street cheat sheet psychology, because that was something else that got brought up. A lot of people, you know, where are we? Oh, hold on. Let me pause this. I had the audio running in the background. So a lot of people are, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out where are we in this cheat sheet. Now, personally, I do still think that we're in this disbelief stage. You know, this is a sucker's rally. And you can see right here, if you take the disbelief and actually bring it back to here, you'll notice that there usually is a little bit of a drop off. And the reason that I'm saying that I think we're in the disbelief headed into the hope stage, um, we may even be in the hope stage right now, possibly. I'm not too sure. But the reason that I say this is because you still see a lot of people saying this is just tether manipulation. This is just over exuberance, you know, um, 
uh, hearing about people say we have to correct down that 80%, right? So that's still telling me like we don't believe the rally. It's There's no way, right? You're seeing a lot of these naysayers and bears still in the market. So that's telling me that we're definitely r- either right here at the bottom of the disbelief waiting for one more potential, you know, little mini wick, right? All the way back up or we are in the hope stage moving forward. Now, Talking about just the fundamentals, the Federal Reserve compares Bitcoin to gold, right? We had Powell come out and basically say that Bitcoin is a store of value. Trump came out with his tweet. Deutsche Bank just fired 18,000 of their employees. The U.S. budget deficit has jumped 23.1%, and the hash rate has reached a new all-time high, including the Bitcoin mining difficulty, the fact that blocks are coming out even faster than 10 minutes. I actually sent Bitcoin several times over the course of the week, and I got the first confirmation really fast, guys. I don't know if I just happened to catch the end of the block and I got lucky, but I had it within like three minutes. It was nuts. I mean, it wasn't fully confirmed, but you could see it on the network, right? So that was something to just point out moving forward. And here is the crazy, crazy thing I was talking about this morning. So, you know, you have basically Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin warning House Speaker Nancy Pelosi that the government may run out of cash in early September if Congress doesn't raise their U.S. borrowing authority. So they say based on on updated projections, there is a scenario in which we run out of cash in early September before Congress re- uh, re- uh, reconvenes. So as such, I request that Congress increase the debt ceiling before Congress leave for summer recess. So that is a... Uh that is something pretty serious. So, you know, you can understand why when a tweet like this is coming out from Donald Trump, I mean, he has to protect the dollar. I mean, that's his job. You know what I'm saying? And these guys are clearly seeing the threat of Bitcoin. They're seeing it completely circumvent these borders. It doesn't even matter anymore. It's unstoppable. We know this. We can go on all day about it. But I want to say thank you, Mr. President, because, you know, you did clearly increased the search for Bitcoin, especially within the four hours that came directly after the tweet. So that was nice to get some brand new exposure as well. But I wanted to talk about this. Now you see Joe from over at Squawk Box. He's changed his tune. Everyone's saying they can't believe it. He's had his aha moment, right? But I actually want to talk about Andrew Ross Sarkin because he actually made, uh, in my opinion, a really great point. So while everyone's talking about Joe, I'm going to give Andrew a little bit of the uh, a little bit of the spotlight. And I just want you to hear what he said here super quick. I'm um, kind of talking about you know why this tweet might have happened and why Trump has said what he said. So we're going to talk about this and then we're going to get into some really, really interesting stuff. So stick around for that. Without question, and I don't want to necessarily go down this rabbit hole, but I, you were right. It was born out of the out of the Wall Street movement, there's no question. It's also born out of a movement where central banks globally are all in a race to devalue yeah, right. their respective currencies. So don't think for a minute this doesn't have anything to do with the fact that everybody's trying to torch their currency. And I think that's where this is born from. And President Trump is right to say the U.S. dollar is a reserve currency, but he has said on a number of occasions he wants it weaker. And quite frankly, if the Fed's going to go down this path of lowering rates, that's what's going to happen. So my point back would be be careful what you wish for. You might actually just get it. So Trump has said that he actually wants to weaken the dollar in order to compete with his financial foes in Europe and China. So that is just something that you really have to consider moving forward. The goal of the dollar is to weaken it, even though we're trying to strengthen it. I am very confused. Somebody please break this down for me. How does this work? Also, speaking of something else that confuses me is why this guy continues to get paid to basically bash Bitcoin and cryptocurrency at conferences, um, you know, that's basically his only thing he's got going for him. Um, some people are actually saying, I wonder if he's just keeping this negative narrative simply because he is getting paid to go to conferences and speak about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies negatively. But this is round two of The Tangle in Taipei with Arthur Hayes and Noriel Rubini. And I just wanted to play this right now. And, um, you know, they talked about the importance of, of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And then obviously they allowed the doctor to have his rebuttal. I want to play this clip and then I want to talk about why why he's wrong. He's just totally wrong about his logic. But let's watch the clip first and then let's have a discussion about it. Tell us what you think are the main benefits of crypto and then I'll get the professor to respond. Why is it an advantage? Why is it a good thing? Why do we need it? So I think we need a choice. In an age where we move from analog to digital, and all payments will be in a digital format. Physical cash will be outlawed, and physical cash is the most anonymous form of payment that we have uh, right now. Once that is stripped away, and people see bare that 
their whole financial existence will be monitored and controlled by government, large corporations, who name it, they will look for something different. Now, Bitcoin represents an opportunity instead of using courts, laws, and violence to govern how money is transferred between individuals and parties, we use open source software, cryptography, and math. Now, which one is successful? I don't know. But as a society, we definitely need a choice. And that is what Bitcoin represents, a choice for a different way to govern financial transactions. OK. Uh, Professor Rubini, what do you say to that? I mean, as we know, Bitcoin is not scalable. It does five transactions per second. Visa does 25,000 transactions per seconds. I believe all in financial innovation about banking the unbanked and helping the poor. But that revolution is called fintech. It has not to do with crypto. It has not to do with blockchain. It's based on artificial intelligence, big data, and the Internet of Things. It's revolutionizing already today payment systems, credit allocation, insurance, capital market, asset allocation. In payment system, everything is already digital. It's not a question of being analog as opposed to digital. There are payment systems today used by billions of people for billions of transactions a day, not five transactions per second. It's not scalable. They're called Alipay in China, or WeChat Pay, called UPI-based system in India, called M-Pesa all over Kenya and Africa, called Venmo and PayPal. These are real things, real business models that make money that are used to do transactions for real goods and services. So his logic is we don't need them. We already have a system that works, right? Now, I'm not going to get into the whole centralization and, you know, Facebook is watching you. We've talked about that. But let's just entertain his idea of the fact that Bitcoin sucks because you can only do about seven transactions per second, you know, whereas PayPal and Visa and all these other things, you could do all these crazy thousands of amounts, right? Well, let's talk about it because you need to understand the evolution of money, the history of money. Thank you, Crypto Priest, for this infographic. As you can see right here, first we bartered, then we had coins, then metal, then notes, then cash, then card, then e-payments, and finally crypto. But let me just explain why this graphic even though it's very helpful, doesn't really help to paint the picture of how layered solutions work, scalable solutions, right? Let's talk about it. So I've said this on the channel before, but okay, the US, we're no longer on the gold standard, right? We got taken off that with Nixon, but let's just say we were. So you would have gold, right? But you're not gonna be moving this gold around. Gold is too heavy. It's expensive to, to, to move. You're not gonna shave it off on the counter and melt it back You know when you're trying to buy something, right? No, that's ridiculous. So what do you do? You get a note to say, that this note is backed by gold, and if you want to redeem it, then you can, right? So that is number one. But also, if you look at that, what do you have on top of that? Notes, cash, same thing, right? So that cash is now sitting in a bank that's representing the gold in a vault, right? Now we have a credit card that basically says, oh yeah, don't worry about it. K-Dub, he's got the money in his bank account, and that money is backed by the gold. Now, I understand we're not on the gold standard, guys. I'm just saying, hypothetically, imagine if you do think that Bitcoin is gold 2.0. You're not going to actually be moving the actual gold itself, right? You will have cash that will represent it, that'll be in the bank, and then you'll have a credit card that'll be tied to the bank account, that'll represent the cash in the bank account, and then going even farther, you'll have things like PayPal, uh, PayPal and Venmo that are then linked up to the credit cards or the debit cards that are linked up to the accounts that are, you know, theoretically backed by gold, right? So comparing the base layer of Bitcoin, which is basically gold, to a top layer solution, like something like PayPal or Venmo, it's like, dude, there's layers in the middle. You're, you're not, you're comparing apples and oranges here. If you want to compare, you know, what Bitcoin actually is, compare Bitcoin to gold. And Bitcoin uh, blows gold out of the water when it comes to pretty much all of its properties, okay? With the exception of the fact that you're not going to use it for electricity. Electronics. Okay, right? But you cannot compare Visa to Bitcoin because Visa is already something that's built on top of something that's built on top of something that's built on top of something. And then things like e-payments like Venmo and PayPal are built on top of those uh, different solutions. So terrible, terrible uh, explanation. And I just wanted to reiterate that for everybody that's new on the channel. Now, let's get back to the fun part. Let's talk about what we are looking for as far as Bitcoin now. Our favorite permable, Tom Lee, has come back out and said it's very surprising, referring to this whole Trump thing. He says, a year ago, I wouldn't have imagined it. It's going to force the other 98% of the world to think about what crypto means. And so I think it's going to be overall positive. And I want to actually come over here and just show you guys what he was saying on Yahoo Finance and why he still believes that we could be seeing a 20K to 40K 
Bitcoin by the end of the year. In fact, just a few videos ago, we had talked about an interesting fractal playing out comparing the gold chart to the Bitcoin chart that maybe we could have a $46,000 Bitcoin by the end of Q4, but we will have a look. So let me turn it over to our favorite permable, Tom Lee. Bitcoin's now trading at a level that it's only seen 3% of its historical days. So if you go back to every milestone that that was achieved, Bitcoin subsequently rallied somewhere between 200 to 400% within the next four months. So I, yeah, so I think if that's playing out this time, that means Bitcoin, you know, could be 20 to 40,000 uh, sometime in the fourth quarter. That sounds like a prediction to me. <laughs> so there you go, guys. Now, obviously, Tom Lee has been known to make some pretty outlandish predictions. So we'll have to take that with a grain of salt. But I thought this was pretty cool. So uh, this guy, Ken Sheriff, apparently he has the Apollo guidance computer that navigated us to the moon. And he goes, but can it mine Bitcoin? He says he tried... Uh, he tried it on our working AGC at 10.3 seconds per hash. It would take a billion times the age of the universe to mine a block. Still faster than mining by hand or punch card. So, wow, guys. Wow. Imagine that. The, uh, the How far technology has come. Of course, that's if you do believe we went to the moon in the first place. <laughs> now, I'm just messing with you guys. That, that's for another day. But we do have Georgia that's joined the elite list of countries that have exempted the value-added tax from Bitcoin. So Georgia will be exempting all traders of the digital coin, be it a company, an individual, any kind of VAT on cryptocurrencies. So the bill was signed by finance minister. And they also provided a definition saying that cryptocurrencies are digital assets that are exchanged electronically and based on a decentralized network, their exchange does not require a reliable intermediary and they are managed using distributed ledger technology. So shout out to everybody in Georgia. I'm sure you just woke up on the right side of the bed today. Congratulations. And just remember, guys, you don't want to be like Tom, who sold all of his Bitcoin at $15, uh, $14 because it finally stabilized and he was tired of waiting. Or like our good old buddy Greg, who says, I wish I'd kept my 1,700 Bitcoin instead of selling them at 30 cents. Gosh darn it, they're now $8 a coin. Wow. $1,700 Bitcoin, huh? Guys, just remember, the trend is your friend until the end. This is what we're looking at. This is what's happening. Short-term price correction, pullback, sure, better opportunities to dollar cost average. Long-term, I think we know the final destination is the moon. I think I rest my case. And on that, I'm gonna leave today's video because I think that's a great place to leave it. So thank you so much for coming back to the channel. If we do end up going lower, well, hey, great chance to accumulate more, guys. That's how you play the accumulation game. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. Thank you for turning on the bell notification. Everyone that's been joining the absolutely free Telegram group, I love seeing you guys talking about crypto and Bitcoin. It's always a fun time. Everyone that's been helping out the channel by using the referral links, joining Bybit, getting yourself a ledger, downloading Brave Browser. I do appreciate it, but it's not required. All I really want is for you guys to just come by, say hello, stop by the channel. That's it. I'm rambling, aren't I? I'm rambling, guys. That's it for today. Hope you have an awesome weekend. Seriously, um, let's have one more quick look. I always like to have a quick look.